Hi, and welcome back to the Vintage Unicorn Beauty Makeup and Etc. I am Emma, and I am so sorry I've been gone. It's been a little bit of a rough week, but I am back with a penchant for makeup. I am going to be doing this look, which is what I call my corporate goth. Just a little bit of a toned down version of my kind of crazy streak. This is a look that I would wear every day using my all time favorite everyday wear palette. This is the Shade and Light Glimmer palette, and I love it. I just love this look. It is something that like, if I could only wear one look for the rest of my life, this is a work look. I feel like this look is very transformative. You can feel beautiful while not going too over the top. And I'm also going to be reviewing a couple of new products that hit Milk Makeup's new selection of shades, as well as the blur stick, which I have never used before, and Kat Von D's new lash liner for the inner waterline. Gotta say, this one I was a little curious about, but I did really enjoy it in the end. Also, the first part of this tutorial is on how I do my brows, just my freehand pomade, really blocky brow. Hope you guys really enjoy it. Please remember to subscribe and follow me on my Instagram, like, comment, all that kind of good stuff because the Jeffree Star giveaway is just around the corner. It is finally here. I have enough of a pool to really, you know, get some some happy people with happy products and enjoying makeup because what else is I mean makeup is just I love makeup anyway I hope you guys enjoy the video and I'll see you on this side so this is going to be a full face review demo and tutorial just to make up for I guess you know not really filming in a week I am gonna be using this this is the blur stick by milk makeup to accompany my new milk blur foundation I had been using light but I got the email that they were expanding their shade range and that's just awesome this right here is their their uh, star stamp nothing will get it off I mean like you can use the best oil base you've got and it's gonna stick and that's that's a pro but it's also a con so this is the matte foundation it is their uh blur liquid and it is in the shade porcelain i don't think this is one of their new shades but i do know that it's a little bit different the bottle is a little bit different it has a new formulation and it just feels so nice on the skin and it's definitely a very full coverage but when i sheer it out it matches my skin tone really nicely so i'm just gonna bounce this with a beauty sponge this is actually japanesque not a beauty blender and i am going to assimilate this into my face I am going to be moving on to brows. I get tons of questions about how I do my brows and it's actually a very simple process. I'm actually gonna be using a Morphe brush. This is the Morphe G21. I love this for, for brows. I do have the Kat Von D Brow Pomade uh, brush, brush number 70, I wanna say. It's just a really nice brush and I don't like using it on the daily. It's also just a little big. Now, this pomade has an interesting formula because during like the hot days, it's really silky and moussey, but now that things are cooling down and because I have the AC on in here, it's just a little bit putty-ish. So I like to work it in the cap so that I don't have large clumps. And I actually start from the, from the, I guess, the end of my brow and I try and connect the dots. So I wanna connect here to where I want my brow to be or my arch rather. So I draw a straight line and I'm actually gonna do this in the mirror. And from there, I put in the high point of my brow. Then it's another line of connect the dots and it's a very strong geometric shape. After that, it's just very gentle brush-like strokes. I like a full brow front here. I don't really do the assimilation, you know, the like the lightning thing. I like to have bold brows and it's just, about connecting those dots, building in those shapes, and then finagling, finagling them into a really nice shape. And basically the way that you're gonna achieve that is very, very small movements, tiny brush-like or hair-like brush strokes. I'm having trouble speaking, I'm not sure why. And then basically just rounding it off. I don't do a lot of cleanup with concealer, but I do a little bit with my eyeshadow base. So that is my standard brow right there and I will match it to the other side. If I have any issues with inconsistency, if one doesn't look like the other, that's when some changes will come in. And I'm also noticing I do want this side to be just a little bit more bold at the front. And then I'll show you what I do to kind of soften that as well. Matching the brows is probably the most difficult part of it because 
as long as they look the same, I'm fairly happy with it. I like the strong brow and, you know, just kind of filling in anywhere that isn't the same on both sides. I don't like using brow stencils. I think there is no such thing as a one size fits all. But what I do like to do with this pomade, especially to lighten it up just a little bit is grab a spoolie and this will help distribute any of the product that might have clumped up in any specific areas and maybe just lighten it ever so slightly and then taper the actual brow hairs. That way the brow hairs are sitting nicely. I love this brow pomade. Some brow pomades have the tendency to feel heavy on the eyebrows and just they, they you can feel them when you move. The Kat Von D is not that way. Uh, granted, now that it's cooling down, it doesn't have that super creamy consistency. I do keep my makeup in a very even temperatured room, but the slight drop in temperature has changed the consistency. But with that said, let's move on to the eyes. So this is a corporate goth, as I call it, tutorial. Something that I can wear that matches my unique style, but also can be worn out. And it's a lot more wearable than even my wearable goth tutorial. It's really just a smoky eye. And this is my City Color Primer. And what I do is I just take it along where I did my brows. It gives the illusion of a really nice cleanup job without doing a very extensive concealer cleanup job. I don't want too much heaviness on my eyelids. It tends to dry them out and yeah. So the less I can put on my eyes in terms of cream products when I'm not doing like a super crazy look, the better because it will end up creasing inevitably. There's not a perfect concealer formula out there. And with your fingers, you can actually get quite a bit of precision. With this tutorial, I'm going to be doing full face, but I'm also gonna be doing a lot of finger application. So this is my go-to palette. If there was one palette I had to use for the rest of my life, couldn't use any other, it would be this palette. This is the Shade and Light Glimmer palette. I absolutely love it. It is stunningly gorgeous and it really gives it i mean there's so many ways you can wear it you can take it to a really high level or you can like kind of calm it down and i'm just going to grab for a morphe 506 this is just a small little blendy brush and in the glimmer palette there are these three base shades this is kind of a yellowy kind of a yellowy cream this one is a dusty kind of color right here and this is a honey color they also have a little bit of iridescence in them but they don't have the super shimmer glimmer finishes as the others so i'm gonna go ahead and dip into this color right here this yellow well it's not really a yellow but it adds just a little bit of a clinging power because it is kind of difficult to work with some of the finishes on this palette so adding a little bit of this powder definitely makes things a little less complicated so i'm just going to fill that in cover my entire lid from lash line to brow bone kat von d is for sure one of the masters in the eye contouring world i mean eye contouring is such a cool thing for me i like to make my eyes wide and i like to make them elongated and you can do this with any palette it's just about placing different shades in different places so now that i have that yellowy color all the way from lash line to brow bone i also put just a little bit right here in the inner corner in the areas that i don't typically put a lot of shadow because they tend to draw my eyes together i want them to be drawn apart but adding just a little bit of that yellow in areas is like this tucking it in there is a glimmer effect to it and it just kind of I don't know I think it opens the eye up a lot so the color that I am going to dip into as my transition shade is another one of these middle shades and it's going to be this brown and I'm just going to pop just a tiny bit of that with the very edge of the same morphe brush in the crease and just work it in in a I guess kind of an oval shape. I don't want to wing this part. This is an eye contour and any winging will be done with some of the darker colors. I just want to set this down as some depth before I go in with some of the fun shades. I always think it's funny after I've added like a transition shade, I'm like, okay, well that's what my eyes look like without makeup, but it really does set a base that you need in order to get that, you know, that 
full effect of the shadows, especially when you're using these shimmers. So I have a couple of favorites. You can tell by the ones that are dug into. Like this black here, it is such a beautiful black. I have thought like, oh my gosh, I need to buy another Glimmer palette because I love this palette so, so, so much. They are a little difficult to work with, so I definitely recommend smaller brushes, smaller movements, and just a little bit of patience. So I'm gonna switch to my Morphe 321, nice and clean, and I am going to, I kinda wanna go for a copper eye. So I'm going to dip into this beautiful red right here. It is such a gorgeous payoff color. You can see it on the brush, and I am just going to start slowly with circular motions, buffing that into the outer corner, and then bringing it up into that same area where I put the transition shade. And it looks like there's a lot of pigment, and there is, but it buffs out so, so beautifully. Now, the 321 is an application brush, not really a blending brush for me, but it allows me to place the pigment before I go in and blend it. And part of me for when I do my eye contouring, anything I do on the top, I wanna match on the bottom. So I just wanna touch that color along the bottom as well. So I am going to now switch to a blending brush, go back to that same 506 I was using, and I'm just gonna soften that a little bit because there is a lot of pigment there and it blends out really pretty. It's a beautiful rust color with that, you know, glimmer pigmentation. And what's really interesting and fun and really actually, I, I do appreciate it, is the Shade and Light Glimmer is an analog for the Shade and Light not glimmer. And so anywhere you don't want that shimmer shadow, you can go ahead and pick a similar color from that palette. They are meant to work together as far as I can tell, and I love that. So right now I am going for a little bit of a raccoon eye, but it will pay off in the end and actually look really natural, at least as far as my usual makeup looks go. So I'm just going to soften that in there and continue. It does have a tendency to crease a little bit and I'm just gonna continue working that. I'm going to also match the other eye. So this is the Shade and Light brush. I did recently, well, it hasn't been used since I cleaned it, but once you've used it once, it kind of does stain ever so slightly, but that's not something I'm too worried about. You could mimic the effects of this with an E36, and I'm going to dip into that black onyx right there. Such a beautiful color. I'm like scared of the day that I lose it, and I just want to very, very gently start to add a little bit of darkness and depth and that invisible wing line to the corner of my eye because I'm probably not going to be doing a large wing with this. I want there to still be that wing shape. So I'm just gonna put that on there with the pencil end of the brush and then taking that pencil end again, I'm going to just draw a little bit right into the crease and I'm gonna connect that with the wing I have drawn then taking a little bit and smoking out the lower lash line. This brush is definitely not a blending brush, so I like to apply first and blend later. So now that I have that onyx color evenly distributed on both eyes, I don't wanna get rid of that wing shape. I just wanna carefully blend that black color into the crease so there isn't too much of a harsh line, and then also just buff it in this area. Also start to kind of shear out the edges of that beautiful, I think it's a rust color. I don't know why it's called sterling. It's such a pretty color though. I just don't want it to be quite so stark. And of course, cleaning up with a little bit of concealer, if you want to do that, will work as well. But I like the kind of messier look. So I'm going to leave that like that. Now, as you can see, there's already a little bit of the effect happening where the inside of the eye being a lighter color is opening the eye. So all I wanna do is take that up to the next level and I have a couple of favorites for doing that. One of them is this pink here, which is called Copper. It's a really pretty rose gold. And then there are the two whites. They have different finishes. The white in the middle, this one here has a definite glitter, ooh, <laughs> has a definite glitter finish. So I'm gonna take the, I guess, so this is the light side. Okay, yeah, I get it, shade and light. So this is the light side of the brush and I'm gonna dip into that really stark white next to onyx called Cinder. And I am just going to pat that in all along this area and then smudge it in. And that will definitely give us some eye contour and also put just a little bit on that inner corner 
and I am going to match the other side. A little bit goes a long way with this color. The camera isn't really picking it up super well, but there is a lot of shimmer going on. Not to the point where it's like falling all over me and I feel like I'm a pixie or something, but definitely like just a subtle kind of prettiness. Reminds me a lot of what I think Kat Von D was trying to do with the Spellbinder palette. Spellbinder palette is absolutely beautiful. It is, oh, I'm also taking that same color and running it along the brow bone and that will also help me with the brows just a little bit to clean them up. And I'm also going to just very gently blend and blur the edges of my beautiful rusty shade there and we are good. So the next part, oh, I was saying, the Spellbinder palette. It's the absolute embodiment of Kat Von D's. Just she has this magic way of making uh, shimmer shades approachable and something that I wanna wear. So she's done it a lot of times. There's the Esperanza palette, there is a Spellbinder palette, and there is also the Alchemist palette. So using the Alchemist palette, I'm going to finish off this look it's like this, you open it up and there are four transformer shades and they are definitely transformative. They change the entire color of your eyeshadow, it's awesome. They have different finishes, they have an opalescent finish, an ultraviolet, a sapphire, and a emerald finish. And because this is kind of a warmer tone, I am going to go for the ultraviolet, just to give it a little bit of contrast. And I'm going to just pop that in the tear duct right there. So it gives a little bit of that, ooh, it's there. I'm going to match it on the other side. And that really opens the eye. Now, no wing, no aligner yet, but there is another product that I'm so glad I waited to give a review on. When I first used this, I hated it. I was like, what is this? It reminded me of, I don't know if any of you guys are really OG. Back in the day, we used to put liquid liner on the inner. Like we would go straight for like, you know, something like this. This is a Burberry liner. Putting this in the inner line. I mean, that was how we did it back in the day, circa 2006 and such. So this has kind of revolutionized the concept because you have a much more comfortable brush and it dries super fast. And Kat Von D is actually releasing three new eyeliners. Eye this is the first of them, then is going to be the Inkwell and Dagger liner. And to my knowledge, they are not released yet. So I'm going to take this and I have wiped off a little bit of the excess. As far as I can tell, the only way to really do this is to pull your eye. So you just want to place it gently in the waterline and try not to blink. The reason I didn't like it to begin with is because it does burn ever so slightly if you get it in areas that it shouldn't be going. Ideally, it should just go within this water. I look crazy right now, but that's okay. So it really just needs to skirt the waterline and go on the waterline itself. And ooh, I just took a big old chunk of my foundation off. And that's, that's part of why I wasn't really like in love with it, but it really does last throughout the day and it gives you that darkness in the lower waterline, which really pulls together most eye looks. So just leaving it open for a second longer and my foundation has completely been pulled off. I guess that's another thing to add to the milk makeup because I did not put my light there. All right, so I'm gonna let that dry for just a second then we're gonna continue. So one of the benefits of using shadows instead of something crazy like, you know, my favorite wing liner is you have more of a light color in the background of your eye so that your eyelashes will really stand out and that makes false lashes less necessary false lashes have are really good for when you have huge crazy liner because it has to be visible beyond that line however if you just use a little bit of black eyeshadow or even even a dark brown eyeshadow you can create the allure of a dark line and your natural lashes will definitely shine through so you don't have to do any unnecessary damage to your lashes so this is the milk makeup kush mascara this is my die hard mascara i love it kat bondi does or she did have a mascara it was the everlasting mascara if I remember correctly had a really interesting wand I do have it but it is very old and I don't really want to put it on my eyelashes and it's more of a collector's piece at this point all right 
So I am just going to fill in my lashes ever so slightly like that and continue to build up the intensity. Something cool about this Kush mascara is it doesn't dry down right away and even when it does it leaves your lashes feeling really soft so you can bend them and move them as opposed to most mascaras which make your eyelashes really brittle like i said i think this is what better than sex was trying to be by too faced and i will never have another too faced product i'm just not with it i'm not down with them i've learned some pretty horrible things about jared blandino and I understand they do have a Better Together collab with Kat Von D, but Kat Von D is her own brand. So just a little bit of mascara and it's a much more, I guess it's a much less pow look than usual. And this is something that I, like I said, this is my everyday go-to wear shadow. So for a little bit of contouring, I'm going to be using Kat Von D's Shade and Light Contour in the shade Subconscious. It is a very warm very warm contour shade so it kind of works as both a bronzer and a contour so i like to put it a little bit higher up on the cheek than i generally would like with a cream or like with the rihanna matchstick and just continue blending that in and taking it really high up there those stars are still there so i guess we're doing stars with this look so it adds like a blush and a face contour effect so kat von d's face products for face contouring do not play around. I just got the single of Subconscious because I don't really need a full contour palette at this time. It's very expensive and it just is, you know? It's just not something that I think I need for my collection at this time. But I also wanna do just a tiny little bit of nose contouring with it to warm up my face a little bit more because that milk shade was just a little light. But I'm actually starting to like it with that, just a little bit of the cool tone Kat Von D added in. It's really nice. I'm gonna take this little like, toothbrush thin brush and I'm just going to follow the line of my eyebrow and that is a lot but that's okay so like I said these shades do not play around I barely touched my brush in that and I'm just going to kind of sharpen the nose point a little bit so that my nose is just a little bit slimmed down and I'm going to take that elf brush again and just kind of feather it so that there's a little less product. So that took off a lot of product. And now I'm going to use a Morphe brush. This is a great Morphe brush for detailed contouring. It's a B14 and I am going to drag it down my nose ever so slightly and just kind of shear that out. Don't get me wrong, I would totally rock the like chisel like that, but we're going for subtlety. Also forgive me that this is so red. It's from when my hair was red, everything is red. I love this hair though, especially with the whole Wednesdays, Wednesday vibes. So there we go. And I'm also going to do just a little bit of actual shimmer highlight using the Alchemist palette. Wow, that is really, really, really warm. Eh. Yeah, I got to tone that down just a little bit. We've taken a beauty blender, just a damp beauty blender, hasn't been used, and just kind of blurring that. I'm also going to... Use a little bit of my Flesh Concealer whatever stick. This thing has proved itself really useful because I am still on, I haven't even rolled it out and it's still giving me really cool results. So even though it is like a mini, it's a really cool little product. And it's really soft as opposed to a lot of other kind of similar products like stick form. And it comes in the color Froth, which is a hard color to find. It's a pretty much stark white. I'm just gonna bounce the Beauty Blender on there, take that up just a little bit, and also take this in here a little bit. That's, that'll also get rid of my dark circles ever so slightly. Give me a little bit of facelift there. Kat Von D also has a whiteout, which is very similar to this, but I don't want a super stark look. I want a little bit of natural, just a little bit of natural. Now I'm gonna take that Alchemist palette again and with my fingers, I'm going to dip into, what color do I want? I think I wanna go for something that'll offset the warmth of this concealer. So I'm gonna go with the green emerald shade and that is what it looks like on the finger. And I'm just going to dab and then blend with a brush after I have applied it. 
I still want a little bit of a crazy highlight and your fingers are a great tool for doing that. So I'm gonna take my Morphe, everyone knows the Morphe highlighter brush, except it's hiding. The Morphe Y14, great for detailed face work like this. I'm just gonna blend that up and give myself a little bit of shimmer. Cool, and I don't need to add any more product. There's enough on there for that. So I am pretty much done. The Kat Von D Lash Line Liner, I I do like it, I actually do. It, it lasts throughout the day. Now, while first applying it, I was like, oh my gosh, this is horrible, but it really does last throughout the day, and that's something that you don't get with any other type of liner in the waterline. So anyway, for today, I think I'm just going to finish off my lips with a little bit of water gloss. This is by KB KBR, BKR, and it's a really nourishing, really hydrating lip balm. It is one of the only quote unquote glosses that is pretty, that also is nice to the lips. Now it does shred foundation, so I can see that my skin right there has come apart just a little bit. And to finish off this look, I am just going to use Kat Von D setting spray, and this is such a fine mist. It has such a lovely scent to it as well. It's cooling, it's mattifying. Oh, it's lovely. And there we go. Well, that was my full face corporate goth wearable kind of look and also my reintroduction back to my channel after my little hiatus. I do wanna say the giveaway is ticking down. I think there are six days left. So in six days, three people are going to be crowned the lucky winners. One is going to receive a Jeffree Star blood sugar palette, the other the Jeffree Star thirsty palette, and the other the Jeffree Star equality liquid lipstick set. All right, guys, thank you so much. Please remember to subscribe and follow me on my Instagram. I will link it below and I'll see you in the next video. Come on.